Hello, everybody. This is Paul with Torah Life Ministries, and we are going to look at something very important today, and I really want you to understand. You know, a lot of people want to focus on the prophecies of the future and the things that are going to happen in the future, but I think we can learn a lot about the past. And when we learn about the past, we need to learn from the mistakes of the previous generations. And we can go all the way back to the beginning generation. And that's what the Bible shows us. It shows us the mistakes we have made generation after generation and the consequences of sin and the judgment of our wonderful creator Yahweh on the people because of their actions. And all throughout history, a remnant was always saved as those that remained righteous throughout the popularity of the wicked times. We have an opportunity and a choice today uh, to fulfill that role of being a remnant of the wickedness that's going on around us. Now, as you're driving and listening to this, whether it's on the radio or whether you're watching us on a computer, it's time we wake up. There's so many people out there that call themselves believers and they get so excited about prophecy and the return of our Messiah Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. They get excited about it because they're waiting for that day when he pulls them out of the fire, when he pulls them out of the, the worries and the things going on in this world. But the scriptures are clear who he's going to take out of that, who he's going to take with him, who he's coming to rescue. We need to understand and learn from the generations of the past. And we have to understand that there's a spiritual battle consistently going on, as it says in Ephesians consistently going on for our souls, consistently happening and taking place that we can't see with our physical eyes. But if we open up our spiritual lives, we realize the issue and we realize what's going on. And I want to teach you some history so hopefully you can learn from the past and understand the great danger. So many people put themselves in on, on, a, on a daily, on a weekly, and on a yearly basis. And hopefully you'll wake up because we're coming to a time now where if you want to call it the occult world, if you want to call it Satan and his demons, if you, whatever you want to call it, now more than ever, the time is arising where the mixing of the seed between the occult world and this real world, between Satan and his uh, uh, demons that have been released on the people more than ever before get tormented at this time more than ever before. Consistently, this battle is going on, but we must, be aware of what is taking place. For it says in the scriptures, in Hosea, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected my Torah, I reject you for being priests for me. Not only will you suffer, but your children will also suffer. And because of our misunderstanding of the past and the way we handle our lives from a spiritual standpoint, if we don't get it right, not only will we suffer, the scriptures say clearly, our children will suffer. That's what it says in the Bible. That's what it says in the scriptures. And we have to make a choice. We have to decide whose side we want to be on. So I want to give you an understanding of what's taking place out there with the, the heathen gods and the goddesses of the world and the, the way people are worshiping them and doing these different things. Because we have a big problem today. We have a big problem today. Understand, understand this, that Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden because they disobeyed our creator. Understand the first sin of man was not about eating an apple. It was about disobeying our creator. And for it, the consequences were they were kicked out of the garden, kicked out of paradise, kicked out of the beautiful place that they had there available for them. And they weren't welcome back. No matter what you believe, no matter what you think, you have to understand two things. Sin is disobedient to our creator and there are consequences for sin. Those two things are a fact. Sin is disobedience to our creator, to his guidelines and instructions for us. And there are consequences, grave consequences to sin. And people don't learn. All throughout history, people don't learn. So after this, and after all the sin that was taking place, man was still corrupt. 
Man disobeyed more than ever before. Man will continue to be terrible in, in, their, in their sin. So our creator brought Noah and his family into the ark in his mercy and grace. He saved that remnant, that remnant. But everyone else he wiped out with the flood. Everyone was wiped out with the flood. But then we look at that. After the flood, man soon returned to their wicked ways and a rebellion against Yahweh. Not long after the flood, there was a man named Nimrod. It says in the scripture, and Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth and was a mighty hunter against or in place of Yahweh. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter against in place of Yahweh. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erek and Asend and Kena, the land of Shinar, generations, uh, uh, Genesis 10, verses 8 to 10. And at Babel, you had Nimrod and his wife, Samarimus. They established a religious system to rebel against our creator. Remember, the people didn't learn from the flood. They didn't learn from Noah. And they continued on this path of wickedness. They established this, this new belief system that went against Yahweh. And who do you think from a spiritual standpoint was leading this? Satan and his demons were leading this. And they believed that in Satan's lie that said uh, that that he would make them as high as the, uh, the heavens can be. And they believed his lies and they decided to follow him. The whole earth was of one language as it says in the scriptures at the time. That's what it says in the, in the book of Genesis at this time. Now this is it's extremely important today. I can go to Google Translate. I could take out a phone and anywhere there's only one language in the world today because translation is abundant. But at this time, it said in the scriptures, behold, the people are one and they have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing which they have imagined to do will be restrained from them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language so they cannot understand one another's speech. This is what Yahweh and what took place. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from the place upon the face of the earth, and they quit building the city. Therefore, the name of it was called Babel, because Yahweh confused the language of all there. And from there, Yahweh scattered them abroad upon the face of the earth. Genesis 11, 1 to 9. And now when the people were scattered, they took that false religion with them but they were of a different language. So they would no longer be able to get together and come together and, 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 and get together on this. However, in the times we are living at today, with all the computer translation and everything else, and with all transportation and everything else, people are back to where they were at that time. People are back to where they were at that time. And it's just... All over us today, the rebellion and the sin that is taking place. And we must be aware of this. The people are worshiping Satan. They're worshiping the devil. They're taking pride in this, and it's creating a tremendous problem. But with that is not just the, the, the continuation of the, Bab the Babylon system. The continuation of this, we are called as believers to wake up and come out of Babylon, to come out. But people today are choosing to go in. They're choosing to go in. The scriptures say, come out of Babylon. The people are choosing to go in. There are so many pagan cults, uh, customs and cultures that have become unpopular again in today's time. Year after year, they continue in the New Testament church and the New Testament times to continue to come back and become popular again. 
pagan days that were once outlawed and banned and people arrested for even thinking of celebrating these days have become the high holidays of the churches themselves today. And today so many people are flocking to the churches on these wicked days to celebrate these wicked events that have nothing to do with our creator and exalt the pagan gods. And people see no issues with it. We look at the, the origins and the customs of these days, and we start right off with a day that's just around the corner that people need to understand the history of. They need to understand uh, everything about it. And that is this day of Halloween. And then you got the days of Christmas and the days of Easter and all the other pagan days that are common today. The Hallmark holidays and the pagan days, they're one in one with each other. And then people that are talking about true scripture and true history and the consequences and reminding the people like myself are the people that are shunned by the world as people want to flock into Babylon and not out of Babylon. The origins of Halloween are tra traced back to the ancient Celts and so who lived in a land, now it's known as Scotland or Wales or whatever, uh, or, or that area, the northern France, uh, and the northern France area. And, and you look at the Druid priests and, and the pagan festivals at the end of October, they corroborated a festival in the waning of the year when the sun began to its downward course and the fields yielded ripened grains. It was summer's end, as it was called, the feast to the uh, dying sun, it was called, because they worshipped the sun, and it was celebrated with sacrificing of humans. That's what they did. They sacrificed humans. They believed during this season, the spirits, the wicked and evil held power over all the souls of man. And on October 31st, their New Year's Eve, great bonfires were kindled which were taught to stimulate the sun and to produce a blessings for certain succeeding year, for the for the entire succeeding year the fires remained burning as a means of frightening away evil spirits the Dr the druids held these early halloween celebrations in honor of uh, Sam samathan also known as the lord of the dead whose festival fell on november 1st these bonfires or bone fires, because during their sacrifices, when the, the, the humans were burned up in the sacrifice, their bones were remained, the bone fires were also used in animal and human sacrifice. Thus, the name, the tradition of lighting a bonfire has continued in modern times. And during this festival, people believed there was a very dim veil between the living and the dead, and they feared that the dead would come back in search of the bodies to possess. Fearing this possession, people did many things to trick the spirits, such as dressing up and looking like Druid priests, uh, dress, uh, dressing up and to look like the spirits themselves to try to deceive the spirits. And the Druid priests wore masks so they would not be recognized and attacked by the evil spirits. Others wore frightening costumes to scare away the evil spirits away. Do we understand the significance of this? And you might be saying, well, I'm taking no part of that. If I celebrate Halloween with my children, if they want to dress up, they're not dressing up as, as evil spirits or scare, something to scare spirits away or, or to look like these the evil. They're dressed up as these superheroes today. They're dressed up as the entertainment people today. Well, what do you think the entertainment people today represent and, and open up a door to? And it's just all coming together now as one as language comes together. When I was a little kid and people dressed up as Superman, they thought there was no evil in that. And now Superman, his son is, is homosexual. And you see a lot of these transvestite superheroes out there today going against the words of our creator, identifying with these things. And whether it's a myth or whether it's truth about this history and the the, the spiritual world coming together with the physical world doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is you're either following our creator as the one and only creator and who he says he is, or you are ignoring that. 
You are disobeying that. You are disagreeing with that. History speaks for itself. Not only the history of our wonderful creator and what he wanted for us to do. Not only the history of the people of the Bible, but more specifically, and, and, and at this time now more than ever before, the history of the antithesis to Yahweh. The history of the people that were trying to destroy everything Yeshua and Yahweh represented. And they continue to do that today through Satan. They try to destroy every foreseeable thing about Yahweh's existence and what he did in his victorious uh, battles and, and, and victories and in his mercy and his grace and saving a remnant and so on. And the question today becomes, do you want to be a remnant? Do you want to flee from Babylon? Or do you want to run to Babylon and become part of the, the spiritual downfall of the people? Come out of people. Come out of Babylon, my people, is what Yahweh calls. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Do you know in the scriptures when it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? They're not talking about lack of knowledge because people have knowledge. People are wise. People are smart. What it's talking about is lack of knowledge of Yahweh and what he wanted and what he expected from the people and what he told the people. And you can look all the way back and you can see the connection between Halloween and the in the Old Testament times, you can see the connection between Halloween and the, the modern celebration of the All Hallowed Eve or Halloween and how it took place hundreds of years ago in the United States and how the Catholic you know, church and the pagan holiday became one. And you can look at the, the religion today that's so popular, the, the Wiccans and the Satanists. And then you can look at the court system today in this country trying to combine the both, you know, and, 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 and I'm telling you this right now, those of you that are listening to this right now and lift, listen this, this much and this far, I'm not saying this message for those of you that already know this and agree with me, this message isn't for you. It might tickle your ears. You might scream about amen and hallelujah and great. And I pray that that message encourages you to go out there and tell others. But this message is for those of you that, number one, do not know this and never heard this before and are going to look into it to see if what I'm saying is true or not. And then prayerfully, you'll see the truth and you'll make a wise decision. But it's also for those of you that are on the fence about this issue. Those of you that think, well, there's no harm in my children going out and dressing up this night. There's no harm in my children Go in and knocking on some strangers' doors and getting some candy. I mean, can you think about that in itself? In the times we live in today, where children are getting kidnapped and people are getting poisoned, that you would allow your children to go to a stranger's house and knock on their door and knock on their door and accept if, if they don't get grabbed in that house. You would allow your children to accept from a person dressed like an evil, wicked spirit candy that they're going to ingest in their body. What is wrong with people today that they don't see anything wrong with this? What's wrong today is Satan is blinding people. Now more than ever before, people should be shunning this day. Whether you're opening your door or whether you're going to somebody else's door, that somebody would put a jack o' landing outside their house and open up the door for strangers and mask. Look, folks, I'm from New York City. If somebody knocks on your door with a wicked mask or any type of mask, whether it's a hockey mask or, or any type of mask, you don't open your door. You don't open your door. That's the way I was brought up. Somebody is knocking on my door that I don't know whether they're wearing a mask or not. You don't open your door. Somebody's going to open your, come to your door with a mask on. I'm not talking about these, these COVID masks. I'm talking about a mask of a, you know, of all these horror movies you see with, with the hockey mask. Somebody's going to come to your house, knock on your door, your little 
doorbell camera means nothing because they're wearing a mask so nothing can be identified. You're going to look at your doorbell camera and see some man in a hockey, a hockey mask or any mask covering his face. And you're going to open your door. And that's not the New York I'm from. <laughs> you know, Yahweh tells us to be careful who we're going to let in our lives. Well, our house is our lives. That's why they call it our living room, right? You're going to open up your door. And, and even worse, some people are going to let their children open the door. It's bad enough when I was a child that my parents let me go around knocking on strangers' doors. And only by the grace of Yahweh, something terrible didn't happen to me. But even if you escape this day and nothing really bad happens to you, something bad is happening. There's a spiritual exchange that is taking place because you're becoming in agreement with the pagan and aligned with the, the pagan holidays and feast days and, and celebrations and so on. And if you do not think there are consequences to that, you are greatly deceived. You are greatly received. We must wake up because this is just a crazy thing that people are doing. It's one thing on a, on a pagan holiday of, of Christmas to be bringing a tree in your house and dressing it up and bowing down and worshiping that. It's another thing to be eating or coloring eggs from a bunny rabbit. I don't know any bunny rabbit that lays eggs, but the coloring bunny rabbits and worshiping a bunny. But it's a whole nother thing on a whole nother level of walking around in these wicked costumes and, and understanding the truth behind this. And I pray that somebody listening to this right now that, that's on the fence of this, that that some of the words that are coming out of my mouth right now are making you shudder and say like, what in the world have I been doing? There's no way that's going to happen. And I'm not going to let the tears of my little child stop me from saving them spiritually. I'm not going to let their, their disappointment that they can't go trick or treating or whatever the church calls it, trunk or treat and all this other garbage. I'm not going to have my child be any part of that or anything of that. These fright nights and all these other things. What's wrong with parents today? And the church today is completely out of hand. The church today is, is having these celebrations, these trunk or treats or all these other crazy things to try to try to make it nice for the children, to teach your children, oh, you can't do that until you grow up. But for now, we'll do it here in the church. No, you should have nothing to do with that. So while people are ignoring everything that our creator told them to follow in his calendar, instead, <clears throat> Christians today, all over the world are being deceived to partake in the wicked days that Satan has as he's controlling this world and he's the God of this world. And you need to make a choice and you're responsible. The scripture teaches us that we are responsible for our children. And I pray people make the right choice. I, I pray uh, people get this. You know, and while we're on this subject, I pray people uh, are careful about what they let their children uh, divulging and, and watch and, and spend their time with video games shooting up people seeing things on tv that the that, that forget about kids that nobody should be seeing and teaching children today all the things of the devil in this world today where little kids are are deceived to not even know if they want to be a boy or a girl and children are taught uh, the, the, about feminism and all this other stuff and all this other thing that goes completely against Yahweh and his ways. And this is what's being taught today. The agenda of the school system today is teaching, <clears throat> is teaching uh, the confusion between boys and girls. They're teaching feminism. They're teaching all these things that are of the devil, not teaching things that are scriptural, not teaching things that are factual. And I'll tell you again, and I said at the beginning, there's two facts of scripture that we must understand. Number one, the fact is that sin is disobedience to our creator. And number two is there are consequences to sin. And I'll give you a third fact right now, the most important of all, if you don't accept Yeshua, the one they call Jesus as the Messiah and follow him and follow him, you will be guilty and you will put yourself in great danger 
and remember the people that were around when the flood came. Remember the people that were around when that happened. Remember the disobedience of Adam and Eve. As a parent, it is your responsibility to teach your child the ways of Yahweh. That's what it is. It's your responsibility to teach your child the ways of Yahweh. In Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, it tells us and calls us, it says, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you should love Yahweh, Yeshua. Remember Yeshua said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And the words which I command you this day, the words that Yeshua said, the ones you call Jesus, if you love me, you'll keep these commandments. You shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk away, when you retire, and when you rise. And bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets from your eyes. Writing them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. Everywhere in your house should be filled with the words of our wonderful creator. Is that happening? Is that taking place? We need to get this right. We need to understand the truth. Yahshua is the truth, the way, the only way. We must wake up. We must get this right. So it's my prayer that people realize this before it's too late. I pray that people get this, they understand this, and they desire, they desire and you desire to fulfill these things in your life and your children's life and fill them with good things. Fill your children with good things and teach your children the way they should go. We've heard the phrase come out of Babylon. Are you going on vacation, booking your plane tickets, getting your car ready, filling it up with gas, and driving to Babylon? Or are you driving away from Babylon? You have that choice, folks. The choice is yours, and what you decide to do with that choice is going to be a great accountability and responsibility for the children that Yahweh blessed us with. And I pray that we make the right choice and, and, and seek the right the right thing to do according to Yahweh's word. But the scriptures say, there's a way before each person that seems right but ends in death. That's what the scriptures say more than once. And then Yahweh says, know the plans I have for you. They are for good and not disaster to give you a future and give you a hope. Which plan do you want to be on? Your plan? Halloween? Christmas? Easter? Or you want to be on Yahweh's plan and his calendar and his time and his blessings? You make that choice. I really, really strongly pray that these words are, are, are penetrating your heart and you're going to seek out scripture and seek out Yahweh and have nothing to do and even if it's going to disappoint your children, let them have nothing to do with Halloween or, or Christmas or Easter or anything like that. All right, everybody, thank you for listening. May our Creator be with you this day and always. Have a blessed day and shalom, shalom. I found the answer.